Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You are listening to the Easy Austin Show, starring your host, Easy Austin. Uh, I have gotten a lot of criticism for my podcast lately, but I don't take criticism to heart because all I know is that there are things that can be improved with anything in life, and my podcast is one of them. I have a perfect topic today. I was always talking about like interpersonal relationships. I always usually mostly talk about like like friendships and relationships and stuff. I don't think I've really gotten into family things. And there's nothing more that says more about family than a husband and a wife having a child or having two children, having a son, having a daughter, and then they have a family. That's a full-fledged family. So I wanted to bring up therapist tries to open parents' eyes by sharing what 28 teenagers and kids have told her. It's only after you become a parent that you realize raising your child has a lot more hidden challenges than you could have foreseen. And we're not just talking about how tough it can be to help them out with their homework and what to pitch to Santa for this year's Christmas gifts. Good parents take the time to look after their kids' mental health, not just their physical well-being a roof over their head and food on the table is absolutely essential but how you communicate and how you treat them is absolutely vital for their well for it fair there are various fears and anxieties to tackle though the sad reality is that traumatic experiences can't always be avoided Nobody is perfect and all parents make mistakes trauma counselor courtney who has 18 years of experience in the field filmed a series of emotionally impactful videos on TikTok that weren't that we were not prepared to see. She shared the things that her child and teenage clients told her about their parents by writing them on sticky notes. It just goes to show how insightful and smart kids really are and how vital it is to actively listen to them. Scroll down to see what she revealed in her three incredibly powerful TikToks and to see how the internet reacted. Now, I, I want to start off by saying... There are a lot of amazing parents out there. And I want to shout out my own parents if they're listening. Shout out to my mom. Shout out to my dad. Probably the most amazing parents that I will ever have. Even though sometimes I arguments awry. And like that happens with every single like household. Like there's no... Per- what I'm trying to say, there's no perfect family relationship. Nothing is perfect. Nothing about... Anything is perfect, right? My parents are not the most perfect parents in the world, but I want them to know that they are absolutely appreciated and that they mean the world to me and that in a thousand lifetimes over, I would always choose them every single time. I would always choose my mom to be in the next lifetime. I would always choose my dad to be in the next lifetime. I would always choose my sister to be in the next lifetime. Like, if I had to do it all over again, I would want my mom to be in my life again. I would want my dad to be in my life again. I would want everybody in my family to be in the next life again. You see what I'm saying? They don't, you don't have to be a perfect parent. You just have to give love, give support, give encouragement, which is what they always do. My parents have always done that. With that being said, there are other parents out there that do not deserve children every I and this is a saying that I've seen online that I truly like agree with and I truly believe in every single child deserves parents right they deserve a mother a father or some sort of legal guardian but not every parent deserves children I'm going to read 20, there's, I think it says 28 teenagers and kids have told her, right? Number one, by a 15 year old, it says, when I say no, it doesn't mean that I am trying to be disrespectful. I just do not agree with you. That is a really big one. And and for the new parents out there that are having kids that are like talking, like when you ask them a question and they answer your question, that is not talking back. If you ask your child a question and they answer your question, that is not talking back. 
That's not smart mouthing you. That's not talking back at you. That's not being smarmy or smart assy. They're answering your question. If you don't want them to talk, you just tell them not to talk and you explain how you feel. That's just my personal opinion. But when you answer a question or when you ask a question, they answer, it's not talking back. Number two, by a seven-year-old. My dog gets more attention. Dad said it's because the dog cannot talk. So I stopped talking. Wow, that, that's insane. My dog gets more attention. Dad said it's because, oh, because the dog can't talk. So I stopped talking. Ugh, that, that hit me. And they're only seven years old. Wow, imagine being a parent. Imagine being a parent and you give the dog or your pet more attention than your own son or daughter, your own seven-year-old son or daughter. And it's because the dog can't talk. So the seven-year-old just stops talking because so that way they'll get attention. Number three, by a 10-year-old. Taking away all that I love doesn't motivate me. It leaves me feeling hopeless. Okay, this is going to be a controversial opinion. I believe in punishment, right? When me and my sister have done bad things, or like we got bad grades on a test, or we have bad grades on our report card or progress reports, or we just got caught some doing something that we weren't supposed to do, my mom or my dad, they punished us. They grounded us and they took away all our stuff. But the fact that people are using that, I, I get the sentiment by the parent because I used to feel the same way. I used to feel the exact same way like this. But as you get older, you'll understand it more. And and mom and dad have always always said this when I when I was younger, like, you might not understand what I'm doing now. Like, you might hate me now, but you're going to thank me later. And they're right. I'm thanking them now for all the all the punishment that we received and how strict they were because it helped us out in the long run. Well, it helped me out in the long run. I can't speak for my sister. So a 16-year-old said, being alone in my room is okay. It doesn't mean that I am suicidal or sad. That's that's also true. Like, 16-year-old, and this... this um. This is a this is a 16-year-old kid that's saying this. And I remember when I was 16, I always used to be in my room and I always used to just be on my phone, just lay on my bed all day, just not doing anything. Even though I know that's bad, like in my personal opinion, it's like there's a lot of teenagers that do that, that just stay in their room and they don't come out of their room. I used to be like that too back in like the late tw the early 2010s, like late 2013, uh 2014. I used to be like that 10 years ago. I cannot believe that that was 10 years ago. Me at 27 years old and now looking back when I was like 17 years old, I was a little like isolating. I was isolating myself because I didn't, I didn't, I just didn't feel right. Like my mental health wasn't all there. Like I wasn't su su suicidal or anything. I don't want to say like I was depressed because I don't think it was depression that I had, but it was, it was something wrong. Like, my mental health just wasn't the best. I think that's the best way to put it. Number five, telling me that you are disappointed in me kills me. I didn't know what I did to hurt you. I was just learning. And that was from a 13-year-old. I mean, okay. Like, I, I get that. This is going to be another controversial thing. It also depends what you've done. Like, if you were just learning something or you knew better. Okay, if you're just learning something and you don't, know what you're doing I feel like that's okay depending on this in, in in to a certain extent I feel like this 13 year old was really actually learning and they didn't know what they were doing and they they didn't know any better I get it like when my parents tell me that they were disappointed in me if I'd done something it did kill me now that I know better I know not to do it next time I'll do something else um but I I get the sentiment let's go to the next one stop Telling me how you think I should feel. You never ask me. You think you have all the answers. And that was a 13-year-old. Stop telling me how you think I feel. You never ask me. Yeah, I I get this too. And this doesn't have to do with like for family either. Like friends could be the same way too. You might think you have all the answers, but you really don't. 
like not and and not not everybody knows everything you know not everybody knows the same things you can look at something you can see how a per like my dad and my mom and dad always tell me like they know how i feel just by like the face i have because i might say that i might feel fine but my my face will always 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 tell you how i'm feeling like really really because some days i can hide it better but other days i just can't but then again it's just like they do ask me but and i guess in this 13 year old's case they never ask how they feel and now i'm starting to think about like a certain situation where like a 13 year old is just like oh i don't feel good but the parent is like oh you feel fine you'll just walk it off you know i can imagine a dad saying that like a like a hard ass dad saying that right okay this is a good one six years old i wish i was as important as their phone a six-year-old saying that i wish i was as important as their phone but then then there's a, a a comment under it that says when but when the kids get the phone the parents will freak out about it whenever he and she or they are on it that is true that is a good point that is a very good point that's a very good point. But then again, it's like, why would you give your kids like six year old, seven year old, eight year old, a, a phone like a like a like an iPhone or a, some sort of Android phone? I'm going to tell you all the truth. I didn't get a phone until I was 17 years old, nearly 18 years old. I was I did not. And I remember like my mom can vouch for me. My dad can vouch for me. I I always told them, oh no, I don't I don't really want a phone right now. I'll I'll wait. I'll I don't want a phone right now. I'll wait. I'll wait. I don't want a phone right now. I was 17 years old when I got my first phone. When I was six years old, when my sister was six years old, and when I was six years old around 2003, 2004, I had toys. Like literal, physical, tangible toys. I had video games. I had my Nintendo 64. I had my PlayStation 2. I had my Nintendo GameCube. I had my Wii. My Nintendo Wii. I had that. I had my Nintendo I, uh, Nintendo DS. I had my Game Boy. And I was happy. I never complained about anything because I had so many things. I never ever complained about anything. My mom and my dad can vouch for me. But in the context of what this six-year-old is saying... Parents will freak out when they give their child a phone and they're always on it or, or on their iPad. They always, they're always on it. They'll freak out about that. But when it comes time to like, oh, uh, if a six-year-old is like, oh, mom, I want to go to the park. Dad, I want to go to the park. Or I want to go outside. Let's walk. I want to play outside or whatever. And um, the mom and dad are just like, wait, hold on a second. And they're like playing Candy Crush or something. or Or they're just on their phone chit-chatting with their their friend or whatever about like shit that don't even matter right when they should be focusing on their six-year-old that wants to go play outside and, and wants to do something you know or mom let's go watch frozen or something like something something anything that's not like being on the phone 24 7 number eight is another big one this is a big one it says i wish parents knew that we can still hear them yell when they close the door that's another big one you okay you want to create a safe environment for your children right everybody does like if you have children you want to make the safest most fun most like carefree environment for your children right like you always want to do that if you're in a position where you're arguing with your spouse, if the husband is arguing with the wife, the wife is arguing with the husband, and you start yelling behind like the door, and the kids can hear that, that is a bad look. If you gotta, if you get into an argument, you gotta talk something out, like either like hire a babysitter or I don't know, just step outside for a second. But that's a really big one. Another six-year-old. If I ran away, my parents wouldn't know. They don't say good night anymore. I am 27 years old and my mom and my dad still say good night every single night. And every time I leave for work or if they leave for work, they're like, okay, be safe. Love you. 
every single night, every single day when they leave for work, every single night when, or if I have to leave for work, um, dad always says, all right, be safe, drive safely, drive carefully and have a good day at work. Mom says, oh, have a good day at work and we love you. Stay safe because you never know when it's going to be the last time they'll, we'll see each other. If you're a parent and if you're a child, always say good night, goodbye, I love you, stay safe. Always say those things or something similar to that effect because you never know when it's going to be the last time you'll see them. And the fact that there are some parents out there that don't even, they don't say I love you, they don't hug their children, they don't give like small little kisses, they don't laugh with them, they don't play with them. They don't do any intimate stuff or spend time with their children. They don't even say goodnight anymore, the six-year-old said. That's really sad. This six-year-old is going to remember that shit for the rest of his life or her life. There are... I, I, I want to, like, emphasize another thing. Like, you think... we You know the term, the saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me? I have never heard a bigger lie than that. And my parents always used to tell me to say that but I never believed it because words do hurt words hurt I don't care what nobody says words hurt but there is another saying that I do like the axe forgets but the tree always remembers you can say something and that six-year-old will remember it 20 years when they're 26 years old when they grow up to be 26 years old there's still, there's still stuff that my mom and my dad said to me when I was a kid that I still remember vividly to this very day. To this day! You remember that? <laughs> you, re you remember that, that meme? I don't know who. It was some sort of basketball play that was like, to this day! To this day! I remember, I still remember it. Everything that they said to me. All those, all those years ago. My mom, I, and I'm, I'm going to share a little bit of a story. She still denies this, but I promise I remember everything vividly. I was sitting in, 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 um, in the parents' room, right? They had a, they had a nice like um, wardrobe, and we had a CRT TV on the top. The show that was playing was the intro to Courage the Cowardly Dog. I don't know what episode it was. I had a bad habit of repeating things as a kid. A ho it was a horrible, horrible, horrible habit of me repeating stuff when I was a kid. Word for word, line for line, I always repeated stuff. Everything that came out of a character's mouth, I would repeat back. That was a big bad habit with me. And rem you know what Eustace says? Like, before the show starts, stupid dog, you made me look bad. And then he starts screaming at him. I repeated that. Stupid dog. I said, stupid dog. My mom was laying in the in the bed next, uh, next to where I was sitting. I was, like, sitting on the edge of the bed, looking up at the wardrobe, the, the CRT TV at the top. And my mom was like, hey, do, don't say that. That's a bad word. I, I, for years, guys, I'm not joking. For years. I thought the word stupid was a cuss word. Let me repeat that again. The word stupid. That word. The word stupid. I used to think that was a cuss word back then. At seven years old, six however many years old I was, for years, I used to think that was a cuss word. Ever since I said it, I was like maybe four years old. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Maybe at around like when I got to middle school or high school was when I stopped believing because there were other worse curse words that everybody was saying like like fuck or shit or something like that something to that effect or bitch or or something like that uh enough of that tangent let's let's keep going um somebody who's 18 years old so they just became a fresh adult i wish parents trusted their kids and stopped controlling them i feel lost now i don't know how to think for me that's a really big thing. I wish parents trusted their kids and stopped controlling them. I feel lost now. I don't know how to think for me. I don't know how to think for myself. That hits home. Not that my parents were controlling, but like they were they were strict. 
my parents are strict and there was a lot of things that other kids got to do that I never got to do and and me personally I'm okay I'm okay with that because I feel like I'm a better safer adult now because of that again I cannot speak for my sister I'm sure she does not feel the exact same way I do but um as far as I concerned I can only speak for myself I do understand this kids uh this 18 year old sentiment about not thinking for themselves like I don't know what else to do for myself like if they can it let's say you like you are a parent that controls your kids and then you send your kid off to the world to do whatever like to just live their life to just live on their own they have to buy a house or get rent an apartment and they have to find a job and then they have to start paying bills and stuff like that they don't they don't know how to do that you know, they just have to figure it out for themselves and they don't know how to do that because the parents always controlled them their whole entire life up until that point. There was another, uh, there's a comment here that says teens should get some independence, not all independence, but some independence. It should not either be a whooping whenever the kid has an opinion or helicopter parents. Eight years old. I wish parents would focus on the good things we do. It's always the bad stuff. Oh my God, that hits home so much for me. This doesn't even have to do with parenting. It's society as a whole. This is this doesn't just have to do with family or parenting or any of that. This is society dealing stuff. I wish people would focus on the good things we do. It's always the bad things. Oh, how true that is. Let's say you do something for somebody. Like you're a kid and you like, oh, you clean the room up for your mom or you you wash the dishes for your mom and and oh, you 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 uh helped clean around and you threw stuff in the garbage and you took out the trash and stuff. And then your mom comes home or your dad comes home and you forgot to do one thing. They will sulk on that one thing and make that whole entire person feel bad. You could do 99 things for a person, but they will always, always, always focus on the one bad thing you do. And if it's that one bad thing, then you're a horrible person. You're you're a bad kid or whatever. I'm not saying that this is the case for me. This is society dealing stuff. Like, I feel this way more so with friends, more so than my own parents. It's always the friends that are like, oh, why don't you do this? You never do this. But what about the other 10 good things that I do for y'all? I always text y'all. I always make sure y'all are, all are okay. Oh, but you never come visit. You never come do stuff with us. Like... Does that even matter? If I'm checking on you, making sure you're okay, and like hyping you up and complimenting you and being a good friend, listening to your problems, isn't that more important? But I digress. I, I'm digressing right now. Number 12, I feel like a bad kid when I make a mistake, usually because my parents think I did it on purpose. Oh, that's another big thing. Like I, to this day, I still feel bad when I make a mistake. I guess I always surrounded myself with like being a perfectionist about always doing the right thing and just doing good, doing good all the time. And then when I do something bad or when I do like a worse thing, it's like people think I do it on purpose when I when I don't mean to, you know, like it's someone says, I want to hug this kid and tell them it isn't their fault. I was raised like this and it's very detrimental to the rest of your life. Number 13, 10 years old says, I love my mom and dad even when they yell at me. I always love, I wish I knew that they loved me just as much. So this 10 year old doesn't even feel like her, like their parents love them. But they're like, oh, I love my mom, but she yells at me. I love my dad, even though he yells at me. Like, I I feel like there's some, um, I feel like there's some missing, like nurturing there. Maybe the parents, like they go out more so than they focus on their children, or at least a 10 year old. That hits, that hits in the feels. Because I used to be a crier as a kid. I was a big, big cry. I cried a lot as a kid. Like almost every single day in first grade. My dad would get pissed that I would cry for no reason. And honestly, I couldn't even tell you why. Maybe it's because I didn't like being at school. I hated being at school. I didn't want to be at school. I wanted to be home with my mom and dad. And I just wanted to be safe with them. That's personally how I felt. Dad hated that. And I completely understand. If I knew somebody that cried all the time, I don't cry any... Like, I. I don't even remember the last time I cried, but um, if I knew somebody that cried a lot and just bitchy and bitched, moaned and complained all the time, I would I would just drop them like and I have known people like that. 
and they're like full grown ass adults that always cry, bitch, moan, and complain, and they never do anything about it. This is a ten year old who um who has parents who yells at him, but they or her, but they still she still loves them or they still love them just as much. Uh this sixteen year old says my mom says in a minute and hours go by. This is why I yell and demand. She forgets me. And sh- and this person is 16. This this kid is 16 years old. Mom says in a minute and hours go by. I don't know this household. So I'm just going to assume that the way the 16 year old is saying like they forget a lot of things like hey, um I got to go do this thing for I got to go to I ass- I want to think that this this 16 year old is either has like volleyball practice or cheerleading practice or some sort of sports practice that they have for for school and they have to go and they don't have anything and mom is like okay I'll take you but in a minute and then hours will go by and then they miss practice or they have to they have to um text their friends like hey come pick me up my mom's not my mom's not taking me I told her she didn't do anything I don't know I don't know it's I can't, I can only imagine what the 16 year old is really going through. I don't know exactly what happens, but I can imagine it's something, something to that effect. There's, this is okay. This is a five year old. I wish parents were nicer. I want them to play with me and they don't. I don't know why I'm sad. That five year old only wants her parents or their parents to play with them. And they're not, they're not even nice. Apparently this kid doesn't have nice parents. I want them I want them to play with me and they don't. Like I want I want to spend time with my parents but they don't want to and they're mean. That poor 5-year-old. If you're okay, if you're doing something really important like as soon as soon as you're done doing that important thing, please put a put some time aside to just play with your children for a little bit, even if it's for a little bit. If you got stuff to do, fine, I get it. Like you're an adult, you got You got obligations, you got things you have to do, like go to work and then come back and then you got to make food and then put food on the table and then, and then do some other stuff like clean the house or something, or you got to fix your car or something. Number 16, it says seven year old. I cry myself to sleep at night. I feel alone. The, the only company I have are my tears. Mom and dad fight a lot at night. And this is a seven-year-old that said this. They said the only company I have are my tears. A seven-year-old shouldn't be talking like that. I don't know about you. A seven a seven-year-old child should not be talking like that. The only company I have are my tears? That's something more like a teenager or an adult would say. Why are seven-year-old children saying this? Be probably because mom and dad are always fighting. Mom and dad are always doing something else, or mom and dad are just doing this, or doing that, or not paying attention to the child, like, I know this is like a paraphrasing, maybe the kid didn't actually say that, but it was something along, something along those lines, that the, the therapist was writing all that stuff down on sticky notes, and she paraphrased it, the, from a nine-year-old, I wish parents would stop asking kids to quote-unquote take sides. I feel bad. A child should not ever be put in that position. A child shouldn't be emotional support. A child should not be, they're not supposed to take sides. Like, because if you're in an argument and the, and the kids see that, and then you ask them, like, who do you believe or what do you think is right? I'm glad that my parents never did that to me. Even when they argue, they never, ever asked me to take sides. Because what, what fair is that? What, how fair is that to me? Like, it's not fair at all. If I get into an argument with somebody, like if I'm married to my wife and I have an argument with her and I have a son or a daughter and I ask them like, who's right? Like I tell my side of the story. She tells her side of the story. Like that's, that's not fair to them. That's not, that's not even right to put your child, to bring your child in the middle of an argument, an adult argument. Kids should, have, shit, kids should not be put in that position. I'm glad my parents never did this. There, 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 are, there are some parents that know better, like my own, 
and there are other parents that are that don't know any better and they it's like high school shit it's like high school shit or even middle school stuff to like take sides imagine a mother or a father saying if you don't take sides with me i'm leaving the house and i will never come back imagine that i that stuff happens Number 18, my parents are always busy or on their phone. Why am I here? It makes me want to leave. And that's another nine-year-old. That's another parents are always busy on their phone. Why am I here? It makes me want to leave. I wish parents loved their kids more than Candy Crush. I hate that game. A 10-year-old hating Candy Crush. Imagine that, right? You shouldn't be prioritizing a game or some other thing over your child. Your child should always be the number one thing in your life. Number 20, when I annoy my mom, it's because... I want her attention. I don't get it any other way. I've seen, you know, I've this makes me think. I I've seen teenagers on like Maury or on Stevo on the Steve Wilco show. Not Stevo. That's he's from Jackass. The Steve Wilco show or or um some like Maury or some other show like drama show like drama reality talk show um that deals with uh, parents that are neglecting their kids and their kids are on stage and they're like, I just want my mom. I don't care about anything else. I want my mom. I want my dad. I want to spend time with them. Most of those, there are most kids that are like, oh, I want to get away from my mom. I want to get away from my dad. And, and they, they, they bury me so much and I just want to leave. I just want to like experience my own thing. I want to be out with my friends. I want to be out with my boyfriend or my girlfriend, or I want to do this. I want to do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But there are some kids that are like, I just want to spend time with my parents. Like, I want my mom to be in my life. I want my dad to be in my life, you know? That's that's deep stuff. Because some parents don't even, like, pay attention to their children. They always think it's it's them. They don't think that their parent is, their, their children are worth it enough. We're back on it, y'all. We're, we're at number 20 right now. Or 21, rather. Or number 21 is a 9-year-old saying, My mom is too busy, she says, but she texts her friends all day. Why not tell me the truth? She is just avoiding me. Oh my God. This is a nine-year-old saying this. Mom, that mom is like always... Te- oh my, I feel like... I feel like I've known people like this. Even with their children, they just... They just don't pay any attention. They just avoid and then they... They're on their phone. They're on their phone all day. They're on... They're like talking to them all day, texting them. And they're like giggling to themselves. And she's like too busy. But what is she busy doing? Texting her friends, calling her friends like doing the latest gossip talking about like bullshit that don't even fucking matter that 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 shouldn't that shouldn't be happening 22 i wish parents wouldn't stay say bad stuff about each other to me it makes me angry what oh my god imagine venting to your your child should not be your therapist that's another thing your child shouldn't have that burden of making you feel like get a therapist Get an actual therapist to do that shit. Don't vent to your your child who's like seven or eight or nine years old who don't even know shit. They don't even know shit about shit. They just they're just they just want to play with toys. They just wanna they just wanna like watch Frozen or something. They wanna like do they wanna watch the little kid movies or or they they just wanna be kids. They just wanna play outside. They wanna be active. They wanna do kid shit. Let them do kid shit. Let them worry about other things when they're older. But for right now, as a 10-year-old, let them be a kid. Don't have your child be your therapist. That's not their job. It's not their job to be your therapist. And to make it worse, don't say stuff about... If if you're like a happily married couple or quote unquote not happily married couple because if they're always talking shit about each other, why the fuck are y'all married in the first place? That's another can of worms that we haven't even opened. First of all, if you're in an unhappy marriage, just divorce. Whether it's the husband that's unhappy, whether it's the wife that's unhappy, just divorce. I know it's like not, it's like taboo and stuff like that, but like you shouldn't be doing that. Like... You shouldn't be together if y'all aren't happy. If you aren't happy, if the other person isn't happy, why are y'all together? And why even have a kid in the first place if you're not happy? That just makes shit worse. That's just another can of worms that we haven't even discovered. 
Like that's something else that y'all have to that they have to that's some personal shit that they have to work out. It's number 23. Lying to me when I ask if you are okay makes me not trust myself. I am connected to you. Okay. So this 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 is a 15-year-old kid. Like, okay. Like they're a little bit older. They can think a little bit for themselves. They they kind of sort of know right from wrong, but they still have other emotions and other things that haven't been explored yet that they are still feeling like they're going through puberty and stuff, you know, like they're going through bodily changes. They're like transforming and transitioning into an adult. It it seems to me like this 15-year-old just wants to know if the parents are okay. And that's fine. It's also like I like I said before, it's not the the kid's job to like be the therapist, but I but props to this 15-year-old kid to like, you know, step up and like want to like take care of his or her mother or father, you know? Like Props to that. Props to this kid. This is most parents. We don't want to unload our issues onto you. We want to be fair. We love you too much to do that to you. It's not because we're trying to deceive you. We're actually trying to protect your well-being. That's true. Yeah, I, I get that. And again, props to this kid. I, I Again, props to this kid who is like wanting to make sure that, that the parents are okay. Like it's like sometimes I don't... I, don't even ask my parents and I should I feel like I should I should call, calling myself out on that one but then again it's like it's not their job to like it's not my job to like make sure that they're okay they have to and it's not it's not their job to like fix me either like I have to fix maybe as a little kid but like now that I'm an adult that I can think for myself and that I can like you know like varied opinions and what I feel like I should do like it's not it's not their job to fix me either. It's, it's like now that I'm now that I'm a 27 year old adult, it's not my parents job to fix me. I have to fix myself. I have to do a lot of things myself because it's my responsibility to make sure that I'm OK. Oh, here. Oh, my God. Eight years old. My parents are just better off divorcing. They stay together for my siblings and I. It, it got to a point where even the eight year old kid saw that something is off with the with the parents either the mother's not happy the father's not happy or something's going on it happens so frequently that the eight-year-old is noticing the eight-year-old who doesn't who shouldn't who shouldn't even know the word divorce like okay obviously maybe the kid doesn't know the word divorce but he said something along the lines of my mom and dad are just better off not being together imagine your eight-year-old kid saying that Eight, your eight-year-old child who doesn't even know about like relationships or or anything like that. Imagine them saying that, oh, you're better off not being together. How bad must it be in that household for that eight-year-old to notice that? That's some pretty, that's some pretty like deep stuff. I, I get it that you want to stay together for like your, like the, for your children. But I feel like if it gets to a point where every one of your kids know that you two are toxic for each other. I think that's a sign within itself that y'all should just split up. That y'all ain't healthy together. But but again, eight years old? Eight years old. And they're telling their parents that they're better off separated. Eight years old. Let's move on. I'm 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 stinging on this one. I'm I'm milking myself on that one i just i it's just so 17 years old i know when my mom lies to me makes me feel stupid i want to be i want her to be honest with me i'm not stupid oh here's a comment that says my mom lies a lot too i miss you she says over the phone just see me for the first time in four years i'm grateful i am blessed and i am forever thankful that my parents have been are, are still together and still living in the same house even though arguments may arise even though arguments may pop up like they're still together after 30 something years after this is going to be like 32 years that they're going to be together i'm forever grateful for that and they're still here supporting me their history they're still here supporting my my sister and they're still here supporting me, loving me, and, and and still being my parents that they always have ever since I was born. I, I'm just I'm just grateful for that. Like, cause there are people, there are dads and and there's fathers and mothers that leave their children at such young ages, 
and I'm an adult and my parents are still together and we're still living, living in the same household, that's a blessing to me. But this, I can more so see this with like my friendships. Like for friendships, I know, or like more so with, with when friendships like end. If there's somebody says like, oh, I miss you. We should catch up. Like it's been five years since you've done me dirty. And now you saying you you miss me and you want to be and, and you want to be my friend again? Get the fuck out of here! This is a seven year old. I wish parents knew that kids love them no matter what. Well, that's 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 true in most cases. I mean, there are some cases where like kids, there's very very rare cases where kids are just born a certain way that they hate everything. Like, they don't love their parents, they don't love their siblings, they don't like their friends. They're, they're just born a certain way that they just hate everything and they're just a problem. But if you're the average seven-year-old, they just love their parents, no matter what. Punishment does not help me. It makes me feel even worse. I believe in punishment. And, and I believe in hardships. I, I know punishments and hardships don't really go hand in hand, but like, there's there's a... There's a comment here that says there's a very fine line between punishment and abuse. People who don't know where that line is should not be in charge of children. So now this eight-year-old is saying punishment does not help me. It makes me feel even worse. But at the same time, as long as your parents are not hitting you, as long as they're not like yelling at you and they're just taking away your... I feel... I personally feel like that's fine. Now, if it's abuse, if it's straight up abuse, if you're literally pummeling your child and hitting them and, and just using all sorts of like tools and weapons on them to, to like hurt them like that, that's bad. That's really bad. And you don't deserve children if you do that. But if you're just simply taking away their phone or just um, taking away their games or whatever, their toys or whatever, their TV, that's fine. Like they're not going to, they're not going to die without those things. But we live in a society today where it's like kids are going to say that they're depressed and that they want to, you know, hurt themselves because they don't have their phone. Like we've gotten to that sort of thing where when I was a kid, I had to suck it up. I'm, I'm going to just go off that topic for a little bit, like not speaking for myself, because I personally believe that punishment should be enforced. Because if you're going to teach your child that there are no consequences, they're going to live their whole life thinking, oh, I can do this because there are no consequences. There are no rules. That's not how you should do things. I would get like a, a spank every once in a while, like just one slap like or one smack on the bum or whatever, or one, you know, just one, just one, just one. If I wasn't acting right or if my sister wasn't acting right, we only got like one like splat like that. They weren't literally beating the shit out of me, you know? I know parents that have done that. I know parents that have literally just beat the shit out of their kids because they done something. If they got a bad grade or something, like they got like Fs in their in their report card or if they um if they did something they weren't supposed to, if they're hanging out with the wrong crowd, or if they got got caught smoking weed, or if they got caught gangbanging, or if they got caught doing something that they weren't supposed to, I personally believe in punishment. Like, it should... You should teach your children everything has a consequence, whether it's a good consequence or a bad consequence. There's... You have to teach your children that there's rules in the household and that there's rules in the world. Now, I will say that there are things that people can get away with, you know? There are people, there are certain things that people can get away with. A whole nother topic for a whole nother day. But nine times out of ten, if you get, if you get caught doing something or if you do something, like, most of the time you're gonna get caught and you're, there's gonna be consequences. There's gonna be consequences with your actions and you're gonna have to reap what you sow and you're gonna have to pay the price for it. In Spongebob, that policeman, when they had they throw Spongebob and Patrick in jail for quote-unquote stealing a balloon. If you can't do the time, don't do the crime. And man, I... That speaks to me. If you can't do the time, don't do the crime. If you don't want to be caught doing something, if you don't want to do punishment, don't do bad things. It is so simple. But there are just some people that just don't get out of that habit. 
and it's it's sad. So I I understand what this 18 year old is trying to say. Like they feel bad that they got punished, but like as long as they're not being beaten to death, as long as they're not being abused, then I feel like those parents are doing the right thing for their child, teaching them that bad things do have bad consequences and good things often have good consequences. Well, not all the time, but most of the time, bad things do have bad consequences. What goes around comes around. That is a very important thing to teach to children that if they do something bad, there's going to be something bad that happens to them. Whether it's, oh, they're going to, they're, if I do this. And that was enough for me to realize, okay, I shouldn't be doing this. I should, I should do this more often. So that way this thing doesn't happen. If I keep my grades up, if I do everything my parents tell me to do, if I don't, if I just be a good kid, then nothing bad's going to happen to me. My, my, my games won't be taken away. My toys won't be taken away. They, I won't get punished. Like, I'll be living a good life. That's my hot take. I, I hope some people will agree with me. And I know there's some people that don't believe in punishment, which I don't know why. What happens if you get caught by the cops? You're most likely going to get arrested. And you're going to be thrown in jail or prison one way or another. That's why there's laws being put into place so that we can, you know, be a more functional society. Like, you can't just go somewhere and just shoot somebody or rob a store or do attempted burglary in a house or something like that without having consequences. I know there are some people that don't feel guilty for doing that stuff, and those are completely different people entirely. You don't teach children that, oh, doing bad things is okay because you're not going to get punished for it. And, and the thing is, like, punishment is not a bad thing. It should be enforced. There's a fine line between abuse and and regular punishment. I know kids are going to say like, oh, that doesn't help me. Like, it, it, it will help you. you it, it's just that you don't understand it yet. I understand what this eight-year-old is trying to say, but like, he just doesn't understand it yet. That's all. And the last thing, a number, number 10, a 10-year-old said, excuse me, uh, when I am annoying you, I just want your attention. That's really it. Some of these were similar, more so similar than the others, and others were just like, oh, I, punishment doesn't help me, um, or my parents don't don't listen to me, or my parents fight a lot, they should just be, they're better off separating, like, kids shouldn't really be saying that, but, that la but the previous one before the last one, number 27, that's a hot take for me that some people will agree with, some people won't. You shouldn't be beating your kids as punishment. Like, that's wrong, right? Don't get me wrong. Like, if you, like, beat your kids as a form of punishment when they get, like, a bad grade or something, or if they do something wrong and you beat the shit out of your kids, like, that, again, that's wrong. Don't get me wrong. Like, we all understand that. Certain punishments, like, I remember when my dad told me to used to, like, write full pages about anything and just have it be neat that's it that was my one punishment and even then it wasn't really punishment it was just me practicing how to like like just writing neatly and but then again i feel like that was a form of punishment i don't, I don't know i don't know i'll have to ask my dad about that but um i i strongly believe in uh in uh light forms of punishment taking away their f i feel like that's not a bad thing I feel like that's not a bad thing taking away people's phones taking away their kids phone that's not a bad thing that's not a bad thing that's not a bad thing because social media is toxic. Uh, uh, texting is toxic sometimes if they get into a fight with friends, like having them do chores around the house. Like that's that's not going to kill them. Like it's, you can live without a phone. You can live without, you know, like TV. You can live without your PlayStation. You can live without games. You can live without Fortnite. You can live without uh, one other thing. You can live without your toys. You know, you can live without all of that. If you, as long as you do what you're told and as long as you follow your parents' like rules and stuff, then they'll be sure to take care of you and they'll be sure to, they'll be sure to, you know, love you to the fullest, you know? Anyway, that's uh, the 28 uh, things. We had a pretty good podcast session today. Yeah, uh, I just want to, if you are, the last message, if you are a parent and you find yourself, uh, like being heartbroken by most of these 
you feel bad about some of these and you want to just hug, just do it. Just hug your child. Just tell them that they mean a lot to you and that you you love them a lot and that you'll be a better parent for them and and just just do that, you know? Doing small things for your children like spending time with them and and working stuff out with your spouse or your partner to be like a better functioning family for for the better of the child and yourself. But hug your parents, hug your children, just hug your hug your children, your sons, your daughters, your mo- your mothers, your fathers, hug all of them and do better for them. Kids do better for your parents and parents do better for your kids. I feel like that's a good enough one to end on. Uh, you guys all know my social medias. You guys know my TikTok. You guys know my Twitter or X. You guys know my Snapchat, my YouTube, my Instagram. You guys know all of that. It's all under Easy Austin. Some of them are together as one uh, one thing with no underscore Easy underscore Austin for Twitter and TikTok or X or whatever you want to call it. And that's all she wrote. That's all I got to say about that in the words of Forrest Gump. And with that, this is Easy Austin signing off.